Hi there and welcome back friends of a thoughtful gaming experience. This is your host Emmanuel Ken. We're back to this let's play and explore Torment Tides of Numenera Beta Early Access Patch 1. We're here in a bar called the Fifth Eye with a woman asking us to convince veterans to join the endless battle. And maybe she knows something and we're just doing this for her. Maybe we'll kill, we can get the shins to get drinks from Feriok. But yeah, we haven't been successful so far. Feriok told us to uh, talk to Clarion to, to get her off her recruiting act. What's this behind Ferion? These pipes are pumping fluids from somewhere outside the bar. They probably weren't intended for drinking. But let's talk to Leto. The other one of the guys Clarion told us to talk to. Though this woman's face is young, she has been beaten hard by the sun. She wears a tight-fitting skin suit under loose desert robes, and her eyes are a deep and unsettling black with no whites to be seen. Occasional streaks of light race across her eyes, flashing in the shadows of her hood like stars plummeting from the sky. I am Leto, she says. I have been waiting for you. Leto's mind is inscrutable. Your thoughts reflect back at you from a thousand angles, like shining a light onto a mirrored ball. Ooh. Interesting. What can you tell me about yourself, Leto? To the northeast, in the middle of the Lost Sea, there's a small town called Jaboa. Dwarfed by the magnificence of the oasis of Mral Jolios, Jaboa is a poor town dependent on the charity of its neighbor. She nods to the bartender and he refills her drink, floating a bottle through the air without touching it. I was born in the slums. The Gibra, residents of the city, would sometimes tour our ghetto. One of them saw my eyes and declared me touched by their god, Nikul. It taught me the deep secrets of their church and showed me how to comprehend the tapestry in my mind. But one day I saw a light flare in Sega's cliffs. Through this city and mine, though this city and mine suffer hostilities, I knew that I must brave those dangers, for I saw the darkening storm. I will not be able to return home, but I arrived in time to aid Dharma in his struggle against the adversaries. For a time I was able to read the strengths to help our team prepare against the adversary's attacks, but they learned to cloak themselves against me, and all I could see of their intent was a generalized darkness. I am of little use against the adversaries now, but I remain to help against other foes. Can you tell me about the people here? I know the stories of my comrades in arms, their past and their future. I have a deep bond with Theo, but friendship with Theoboros, my respect for Dama knows no limit, and I have fond recollections of Feriok's ready wit. Who would you n know about? I will look into their futures only once for you. So pay attention. Uh, let's go for the leader, Dama. He's the lodestone, the hoverglass, the light that lifts and the rope that binds. His strength is our strength, and through him we become stronger. He's the caller, the bringer, the tactician, and the strategist. He brings us to this place, and in the future he is gone. She does not see you as she speaks. The unseen adversary claims him unless no. The probabilities are too low. She shakes her head, bringing herself back to the present. Is he still here? She slashes a glance across the bar to him, and she breathes a sigh of relief. She focuses and smiles, and Dama looks up and smiles back. And uh, all right, we have one for each of them. Then tell me about Feriok. He had eyes. He saw and built and shown. His powers were those of speech and attraction. He was our empire, the weaver of hope and reconciliation. An angry citizen comes, threatening violence, and Feriok eats his pain and makes a new man in his place. In those old strands, Feriok is my friend. And you mine, Leto, Feriok says. Tell me about Ziob. She gives herself too little credit. During the Cobalt Breach, she erects a shield around her company and fires precise balls of telekinetic rage into the attackers. She destroys their inhuman captain, hurling him from the walls into a dark space, and then dismembers the attackers who have come for me. In that day, she is my hero. 
She's the only one of us who can touch the physical world so completely. And when Dharma dies, she stands to unite us. No, wait, this isn't real. Not yet. She slaps herself lightly and mutters, Walk in this world, Leto, this world alone. Tell me about Thiboros. He finds the Neverjin shrinking and trembling, and it speaks the eight words of Kra to him. In his mind he seals them, and they chew him to pieces, until his brain has lost their knowledge altogether. She looks across the bar to the old man. No, that is a past possibility. That is not this reality. His mind is still intact. His stories still resonate. Is this the world in which he buries the last of the words of Kra? She shrugs, but he is the man who helps plan our battlefields. He shapes our expectations. It is he who brings the first adversary low. It shows him a story, and he tells it a better one. Bows to his vision before it knows his strength, and he traps it. He's a hero to this reality, although he knows it not. I want to ask other questions, too. Uh, can you tell me more stories about your colleagues? Whom did I want? Did you want to speak? All right, no more stories. As you wish. Can you tell me anything about the people I travel with? Ask and I will tell. Tell me about Calistique. She turns her unsettling gaze onto Calistique. You are in many realities, singularity seeker. In some you destroy yourself, others see you tri triumphant over ashes, or you subsume yourself in yourself. She shakes her head, glittering possibilities few probabilities. Can you tell me the steps that lead to my destruction? What do I do to succeed? Your future shifts even as you ask the question. The sisters to your right seek advantage. The ones to your left compromise. You are on the edge of the blade. Your choices are yours and your future echoes through realities. All you need to do is step. Your trafficking in supposition and symbol what makes you any better than a hedge witch prognosticating in lark entrails? What makes me different? She smiles wide. I actually see the future, Calistique. Your path is fraud. And you are your own worst enemy. Interesting. Hmm. Her path is fraud. Tell me about Tiber. For the Gallo Glass, I have only one prediction. Change your ways or live with your regrets forever. Forever? That's a long time, my dear. And I'm told nothing lasts that long. She turns her head toward him and looks away, shivering. I have spoken. All right, forget it. I want to ask other questions now. Um, yeah, I'm looking for people to join Clarion in the endless battle. Will you join? Well, it's very unlikely. Dharma is still here. Is he not? I follow his lead. He believes one of our old foes is still present. And if he believes it, I do as well. I will not abandon him, should he need me. Will you join the endless battle now? I told you, I will not leave until Dharma has resolved that the adversary is gone. That's all for now. Farewell. Ah, oh, we can go in here directly. What's this? This fancy couch might have come from an aristocrat's house except for the stains and the smell of vomit. This booth was once a metal tank that held some sort of liquid. An odd lilting sound occasionally rises from within this machine as if a musician is trapped inside. This booth was once a metal tank that held some sort of liquid. Very industrial here, it seems. Well, let's talk to Ziobe now, the new leader. What does she tell us? This woman's face seems timeless, neither old nor young, unblemished but somehow not perfect. Her dark and wavy hair floats like a cloud to her shoulders. When she speaks, her voice is musical, almost artificial. I am Siobe, and you are... She concentrates, fingers pressed to her temples. When her table mates start smiling, she pulls them away. I am not actually a mind reader like these two, just a joker. Yeah. So you're not going to guess who I am? 
I don't know who you are, but I can tell you where you're from. Tell me, are you from the area? A small hamlet slightly isolated, but still within the broader Sega's protectorate. Somewhere near Arvin Wood, perhaps? I actually don't know where I'm from. I was born in a falling star. A what? How is it that you know the language here? You must be particularly observant. Your voice, your inflections, your mannerisms. They speak of someone whose upbringing was based on an older version of the Sega's Cliffs dialect. That suggests an isolated aldea or enclave of some sort. Although she claimed not to be a mind reader, Seop's mind is impenetrable. She might as well be one of the bartender's pumps. Um, what's going on with this place? It's the fifth eye. It's where the psychics and psionics of the city have been coming for generations to protect ourselves from the noise of the city. Life is easier when you're among friendly people. Those of your own kind, she loves. <laughs> Though not everyone here is technically one of us. Some of the people you see here are manifestations of our, our minds. Some of them were called here by our minds. Some have come from other dimensions even. She leans back, tapping a finger on her lips. I have a challenge for you. One of the five of us who own this bar is a projection. Talk to the surviving veterans of the psychic wars and see if you can figure out which one of us is a projection. You can ask each of us only once, so make your questioning count. Ah, uh, can you tell me more about yourself? I, I am Seobe. I hail from the western reaches of the Clock of Kala, near Matheonis. She bows her head modestly. I have had the opportunity to serve with my fellows here in a number of disturbances, though if you wish to hear more about those conflicts, you must speak with Dama. I am their support, their backup, and if need to be, their physical offense. Are you the psychic protection? Me? No. No, indeed. In fact, I am projecting him now. It's my power that makes the projection possible. If I were you, I'd focus on physicality. Best of luck. I'd like to ask you to join the endless battle. Innocence are suffering. I am through with war. Finished. I want nothing more to do with conflict. I have served my time. My colleagues might help you, but I refuse. Don't ask again. Thank you and farewell. May the wind carry you. And let's go to Thiboros now. This man's mind is unintelligible, like trying to read the thoughts of a book that's been glued shut. Error, all right. The old man is old and strong, his face lined with years of brutal experience. His face is aquiline, his nose sharp, he wears a broad-brimmed hat, and his voice is a slow rasp. I am Theoboros, he says. Tell me your story. Make it a good one. Uh, <laughs> I was born falling from the sky, and now I'm trying to repair a chamber that will stop a nightmare. He watches you intently as you speak, and when you finish he nods sharply. You're telling the truth, he says. A lot of people embellish, or they lie outright. Try to pretend they're more than they are, so people re remember them as giants. More often than not, they just end up looking ridiculous. Pats you on the shoulder. You've given me a rare treat, thanks. So, what do you want? Can't help you with your chamber, but maybe there's something else. Hmm. Can you tell me about yourself? I'm the brains of this operation. Gestures with a lazy hand about around the table. Without me, they'd lose the thread of their thoughts and spend all their time wandering in dreams. Dharma of the blue. We're just trying to get away from your nagging, he tips his friend a wink. It's that nagging that sharpens my words, says Siboros. Though I admit that my words are probably getting duller every second I spend talking to you. He turns back to you. I'm, let's call me a warrior of language. Words are my weapons and my treasures. They might be pretty sounds to you, but to me, they're the tools that pry open your imagination and leave you vulnerable to my friends here. 
I build pictures, set the scenes and create mazes in your minds. He takes a careful sip of his drink. I'm also the last person in the world to know where the words, the lost words of Kra. He closes his eyes tightly and when he opens them again you see warms of light dancing in his eyes. They're gone again with his next blink. They're a weaponized meme, a thought that sticks in your head, a tune you can't get rid of, a saying that echoes in your mind until it drives you mad and melts your brain. Siobe, she lays a hand on his arm. You don't have to talk about this, Siboros, she turns to you. It's eating away at him. He has it compartmentalized, but he says that he can't feel it burning that he can feel it burning away at his mind. Can you help him? Um, what can you tell me about the words of Kra? His long face grows more somber, if that's possible. Those words were the ruin of an ancient civilization. I had this story from a dying Nevajin before I wrested the last word from his mind. So, this is the Nevajin we had at the start. When we attuned to the tides, goes like this. The Aeon priests of that age had found deep truths about the world and they stumbled across these words. They wrote the knowledge down and sealed the words away, the strongest warnings they could find, and then they killed themselves so that they wouldn't infect their kind. The problem was, they didn't count on their writings sticking through the ages. Some skist-brained fool ignored the warnings on the bindings, read the words and spilled them out into the civilization that had grown up in that spot over the millennia. Eight rulers of Kra, eight words, and a continent-spanning empire fell, its people bleeding from their eyes with hatred in their hearts. Survivors tried the scholar who'd released the words, buried him forever in stone. The words were lost again. And this is very interesting because it's based on a real-life theory of Susan Blackmore. It's about living memes. Memes like organisms infecting our minds. So, again, this is giving me the shivers because it, it can, it could be real. And if you're looking for another thing of that, you could go to Monty Python's. <laughs> they have a sketch where they develop the... Uh, there's developed by the Nazis, I think. <laughs> the... The deadliest, deadliest joke ever, and it actually kills kills off all the Nazis, and the Brits win the war because, um, yeah, because they cannot understand it, <laughs> because it's in German. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the two things that this might be inspired of, and it's a fascinating concept. Then some idiot Nevergin found the trapped fool who'd caused all the trouble to begin with. He was still alive. It learned the words from him and started infecting others. Other Nevergin travelers come seeking knowledge. Have you ever killed a Nevergin? He closes his eyes and speaks softly. I hadn't till then. They're kind creatures, wise. I took their pain from them. I ate the words of Kra, trapped them in a maze in my mind. Only. Now I fear they're near the exit. Hmm. What can you tell me about this place? Just to pose a more innocent question. Ask Dama, ask Leto, ask Siobe or Feriok. I just drink here. He considers, I don't think I told you anything the first time, so no. Um... What are you going to do about the weaponized meme that's escaping your mind? Well, I could always kill myself. Honestly, I don't think anyone else could carry it, and the alternatives are too horrific to bear. He tilts his glass toward them. I love my colleagues here, but can they handle the words of Kra? Sorry, friends, but no. Right now, I've got them locked into a mental construct no one has even the slightest idea how to build. Hmm, this is somehow fascinating for an intellectual we want these words to be sure as an intellectual um, yeah I do have space in my mind and I can contain the words of Kra there he leans back and crosses his arms really and how is it that you're a better custodian for the words of Kra than I am I'm more than strong enough use your psychic ability to read me 
Let's try that. Success, he focuses on you. And you feel something like the scattering of spiders across your mind. They plunge inside and suddenly you feel his presence in the labyrinth and you can feel his mind recoil. He snaps his eyes back to yours. Yes. Yes, I think you'd be an excellent vessel. Do not use the word. Keep it contained. You hear me? He leans forward and whispers the word into your ear. It is a beautiful word and you feel your tongue curling to shape it aloud. Thiborus claps his hand across your mouth, his eyes tight on yours, and with his mind he drags the knowledge of the word into the labyrinth, into a disused corner, and he seals it with an image of steel, glass, and dark infinites of space. He leans back, panting. Siobe. Yes, she says. I need a piece of my mind cauterized here. Touches his hands to her temples and she to his. They lean forward, their foreheads touching. You see a flare of light, and he cries out with pain, but he doesn't let go. When they release their hold on each other, you see a small smoking hole in his forehead. I couldn't take the chance it would leave a trace of itself in here. It's gone from me. It's your responsibility now. Oh, all right. <laughs> Maybe we have killed ourselves now. But, well, intellectuals, you know. We want to explore every secret that is there. Ah. Siobe says one of your veterans is a psychic projection. Is it you? Probably not, but... A psychic projection. That is an interesting way to word it, Zed. He tilts his head towards Siobe. Couldn't you say that we're all psychic protections in one way or another? He leans in. Put it this way. Are you always how I picture you? Does your behavior change based on my thoughts? Hmm. Yes, depending on that image anyway, I might change my behavior to improve your opinion. So you're influenced by my thoughts, but are my thoughts the whole of you? If they are, then you are my imagination and the converse. You'd say we're one consciousness, subjectively experiencing itself, and that means we're all each others and our own psychic projections he takes a slow reflective reflective breath but we are also autonomous eh at least to some degree you exist when i'm not paying attention to you pretty sure i've no need to imagine someone like you we might as well say that we are all interconnected at a fundamental level that our thoughts and actions have effects on each other it might not be reality that is the truth but we have we each have a perception of a truth it's a guiding star that we use to live our lives. It's not reality for everyone, but it's reality for us. It's our story. Dharma of the Bloom, he rolls his eyes. Oh no, Theoboros is getting started again. Hush you. I am lecturing. He turns back to you. Even if we don't understand reality, we understand stories. So maybe our best gorge for how we experience each other is through the stories we know and the words we use when we tell those stories he loves. What I'm really telling you is that I'm not Seobe's projection. Maybe learn some of our tales and you'll get to the truth. A truth, anyway. Will you come and join the Endless Battle? Help fight to save some innocent lives. Not while Dharma is still convinced there's an adversary, no. Besides, I've got other concerns. Maybe later. Farewell. Well, that was a lot to take in. We've got to think about this deep stuff here. About Susan Blackmore's meme theory and all of that. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for listening, I would say. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please join again in the next episode when we explore this fascinating matter further. Thank you for watching. Happy gaming to you. This is Immanuel Ken signing out. <laughs>